guys, it's Kelly and today I've got a really exciting video for you. I'm actually doing another Nail Polish 101 video and it's been so long since I've done one I honestly don't even remember the last time I filmed a Nail Polish 101. I don't know why that is. I guess I was like getting really caught up in my favorite Nail Polishes series but anyway, if you guys are relatively new to my channel and you haven't heard of my Nail Polish 101 series, basically it is just a series of basics videos where I'm answering sort of the questions that people are too scared to ask or the questions that people don't really answer online because it's almost like expected that you're supposed to know this stuff but I mean how are you gonna know this stuff unless you learn it so that's the whole point of these videos basically just trying to teach you from absolute beginners to people who just might want to be refreshed on some tips on just all of my tips and tricks for nail polish nail care nail art anything like that it's all just encompassed in my nail polish 101 series so today I'm actually doing a video that I filmed like a really long time ago funny enough I actually filmed this when I was filming my vlog of like a day in my life which I have over on my vlog channel and I like did not do a good job so I just scrapped the video and then I just haven't done it and now I'm here to do that video for you. That was a really long intro but basically today we're going to be going over my must-have nail art tools for any nail artist and we're going to be going over the absolute basics. We're not talking about like doing crazy advanced stuff like stamping or anything like that. We're just going over the absolute basics, things that I think every nail artist should have to to, you know get started with basic nail art and then you can sort of improve from there so anyway all that rambling aside let's just get started with the video so my first nail art must have is dotting tools and this is actually the first type of nail art tool that I ever bought before I even brought brushes or anything like that because I think dotting tools are so important if you guys don't know what they are basically it's just like a little tool that has a dot on the end and they come in different sizes you can actually make your own dotting tools you don't necessarily need to use tools that you have purchased. I do find that they're a little bit more consistent when I do use dotting tools that I have bought that are specifically meant for that. But I do actually have a DIY video on how to make your own dotting tools. Basically, you can just like use a pen, you can use a bobby pin, you can use anything that sort of has like a little rounded tip like that. But like I said, I just think it's a little bit easier and more consistent to work with when you're using dotting tools that are specifically meant for nailer. And I do think having the different sizes is so important. When you use a bigger dotting tool, you're going to get much bigger dots, obviously, but it creates a totally different look. So if you're doing polka dots with a big dotting tool, it's going to be very different than if you're doing polka dots with a small dotting tool or a toothpick or something like that. You're creating a totally different nail art look. And I think that's actually really important and really fun to have because you can just have dotting tools and you can honestly create so many different types of nail art, so many different types of dot cures. You really won't run out anytime soon. So highly recommend having dotting tools. I think it's so important. All right, this brings me to my next recommendation, which is nail art brushes. Obviously, if you want to do nail art, nail art brushes are definitely a way to go. Obviously, you don't need nail art brushes to do a lot of different types of nail art. In fact, I have a whole playlist of videos using no tools, but if you want to do any more intricate designs, having nail art brushes is really important. And again, these are not things that you need to specifically buy for nail art. In fact, the majority of my collection of nail art brushes is actually just striping brushes that I purchased from arts and craft stores. That being said, they are equally as expensive, so you may as well just get ones that are already the perfect size, because I find a lot of times with buying them from arts and craft stores like Michaels or Blake or anything like that, is I do actually need to cut them to be a little bit smaller, and I think that it's really important to have sort of a variation in different types of nail art brushes. Like, you can have a long striping brush to do like longer, more general lines across your nail. You can have a smaller one to to do like more detailed designs and then you can also have a thicker one to kind of fill in spaces using tape or anything like that. So I do think that having a variation of different nail art brushes is important. I like having a bunch of them. I honestly have too many but I think having like maybe around five or six is a good amount to work with. All right so my next recommendation for all nail artists is to invest in some striping tape and when I say invest I mean just throw a couple dollars because it's not that expensive. If you guys don't know what it is it's basically just super super thin tape that you can use and it has multiple purposes. You can either use this in your nail art design or you can actually use it as a guide and you can peel it up once you've painted over it and it'll create a really nice crisp 
thin line. And I use striping tape all the time. I think it's a huge asset to having different nail art and it's so inexpensive. I've actually found that if you go to the store and you buy like one striping roll, it's gonna cost you like a few dollars. Whereas if you buy it on Amazon, you can literally get a lifetime supply for like three to five dollars. I have only ever purchased striping tape once in my life. I do nail art all the time and I still have so much left. Like this is literally a lifetime supply. I will never need to purchase more. I think that's awesome. It's so inexpensive. It works so well. It's perfect for doing sort of like those crisp line designs. I actually use it a lot of times when I'm doing a French manicure because I just think it works so well and it's meant for nail polish so it's less likely to actually like peel up your design. However, I do want to say there's a lot of benefits to having regular scotch tape and this is something that I keep on my desk specifically for nail art because I think this is also a really important tool for people to have for nail art. I think that while striping tape is really awesome and I always prefer to use it, there are a lot of uses that you can get with scotch tape. And one of them is actually, well, I mean, obviously you can use scotch tape to block off areas of your nail to do different nail art designs or different colors and then peel it off to reveal sort of a two-tone or three-tone or whatever design. And I think that's really awesome to have. But you can also use scotch tape as a barrier around your nails. Before the whole liquid latex craze came out, people were just using scotch tape around their nails to protect it from like gradients, from water marbles, from all that stuff. So it's always nice to have it on hand and especially like if I'm in a hurry and I don't want to wait for my liquid latex to dry, I am always going to use scotch tape. I just think it's easy. If you're getting into more advanced stuff and you are doing nail stamping, scotch tape is a lifesaver because it does actually peel the excess off of your hand if you're stamping onto it and it also is good for cleaning off your stamper but that's that's nail polish 201 stuff so we won't go over stamping just yet. I do think that scotch tape is super important to have and I always keep it on my desk and I always have refills handy because I use a lot of scotch tape. So I briefly mentioned liquid latex but now I will give it its own little moment to shine. I think liquid latex is also a really important tool for nail artists to have. Obviously if you are allergic to latex don't use it but there are a lot of really good latex free alternatives. Maniology is one of the ones that has a latex free barrier that you can purchase and I think it works really well. I've used it before even though I do not have a sensitivity to latex. I just want Hi, editing Kelly here. Just wanted to really quickly point out that this is the exact moment where a feather flew into my hair and landed on my head and remained there for the rest of the video. I have nothing else to say. I just wanted you guys to know. All right, carry on. I just wanted to know if it worked as well and it totally does. But anyway, liquid latex basically protects the skin around your nail when you're doing certain types of nail art. So if you're doing a gradient, if you're doing stamping, if you're doing anything that can get particularly messy, putting liquid latex around your skin will make cleanup so much easier in the long run. I am holding up this tub because I prefer to buy liquid latex off of Amazon on, it is significantly cheaper than if you buy a specific liquid latex that's like sold in a nail polish bottle that's specifically for that use. Like if you buy one, they're like, they could be like $15 for just one little nail polish bottle, or you could just get a giant tub for like $8. I actually have a whole video on that too, so I'll also link that up in the cards for anybody who's interested. But yeah, I, I think it's really good to have. I think it's cheap if you buy it in bulk like this, and it's really easy to use. And you can also, if you want to get fancy, you can actually use it as a barrier in your nail and peel it off to reveal designs. I am not fancy enough to do that. I don't have as much skill as that requires, but if you're into that sort of thing, you can totally do that too. Okay, so my next must-have tool is kind of a weird one and probably a dumb one, but I do think it's really important to have, and that is acetone and a cleanup brush. I think this makes such a huge difference in having a good nail art design and having an amazing nail art design, because cleaning up that edge of your nail and just making everything look nice and smooth makes such a difference. I think it just looks so much better. A lot of people will just kind of feel little messy around their cuticles and then wait until they're in the shower to clean it off. But I do not like doing that. I'm very particular. I like when my design is like very smooth as soon as I apply it. Having acetone and a cleanup brush is really important to me. This is another thing I have a whole video on, so I will put it up here and I won't get into it now, but basically I just buy a little concealer brush. This is the e.l.f. concealer brush and I use it all the time. I buy them in bulk. They cost like a dollar at Target and Walmart. So every time I see them, I just buy a bunch of them because they do 
fall apart pretty easily. But this is what I use to clean up with. There are also brands that make them. Maniology is one of the ones that makes a cleanup brush. It's a lot better quality. It's a little bit more expensive, but it does last longer. And you can also use this, but if you're in a pinch and you want something cheap, you can just buy the e.l.f. concealer brush because it's pretty good. Although I will say, I think they caught on to the fact that a lot of us nail artists use them because they're starting to raise the prices in some places. And everybody I know who picks them up is always like, yeah, I'm using it for nail art. And I'm like, oh, me too. <laughs> All right, my next must-have nail art tool is black and white nail polish. Something that, again, seems pretty obvious, but it's weird how you don't think about it until you are in the middle of a manicure and you realize you need white or black and you don't have it. Oh my gosh, black and white nail polish is so important to have. When I first started getting into nail art, I did not have black or white nail polish because I didn't I didn't think about buying it. I didn't think it was like important to have. I would just buy colors that I would wear on their own that I could also use for nail art, but I, I wouldn't necessarily wear black or white on their own. And I remember one time I was doing penguin nail art and I was like, oh wait, I don't have black. Oh, I'll use blue. It's fine. And then when I got to like the belly of the penguin, I was like, oh, I don't have white. Okay, I can't do this. That's just a very basic way to say you definitely need black and white nail polish. It is like a staple to have for nail art. You can always use white nail polish as a base for gradients. You can always use black nail polish also for gradients, but also just for details for literally anything. Very important to have black and white. I am planning on doing a video in my favorite nail polish series on my favorite white nail polishes and my favorite black nail polishes, so I won't get into it right now, but obviously any black or white nail polish that I use in my videos is one that I would probably recommend, so if you guys are in a pinch and you want to pick out ones that I like, you can check out some of my nail art videos. All right, my next must-have nail art tool is Quick Dry Top Coat, and this is another one. I feel like a lot of these are just things that you wouldn't think about, which is why I wanted to make this video in general, because instead of talking about like the specific tools, I want to talk to you about the things that you don't think you need, but you actually totally need. Quick Dry Top Coat is extremely important for nail art. If you're going to be using anything, like a sponge, if you're taping anything on, you want to have a Quick Dry Top Coat to make that first layer of nail polish, that first color, dry before you move on. Otherwise, you're going to smudge your design, you're going to smudge your nails, you're going to peel off the color when you peel off the tape. Having Quick Dry Top Coat is so important for that. One that I love is the Cuccio 7 Second Top Coat because it's really thin and it applies super quickly, it dries super quickly, and then you can move on to the next step of your nail art. One of my least favorite things when doing nail art is waiting a long time for my color to dry so I can move on to the next step. So yeah, having quick dry top coat, so important. This is another thing I'm going to be doing a separate video on my favorite quick dry top coats, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, yeah, the Cuccia one is really good. And a quick aside, having a gel-like top coat is also really important because when you're done with your design, it's probably going to be lumpy because there's different layers of colors creating that nail art. So having a gel-like top coat coat will smooth out all of those layers and make it look really nice. And if you're me, you also want matte top coat to help that look nice and matte because I like nail art when it's mattified. <laughs> That'll be in another video. All right, and my last recommendation for every nail artist to have is sponges. And oh man, you do not need a fancy nail art sponge. You just need a regular old cosmetic sponge. I just buy these sponges in bulk. They're just those little triangle face sponges. And it doesn't even matter what kind you get. If you're getting a face sponge, you're getting the right kind. Just buy a cheap one. They're really good. You can use these for gradients. You can use these for glitter gradients. You can use these for a lot of stuff. So I think that sponges are really important. I'll put a link up to my ultimate gradient video if you guys want to learn more about my sponge preferences. But yeah, sponges, super important to have. All right, and I know that was my last one, but just a little quick, it's not really a tool that you must have, but it's a nice easy shortcut, and that is nail vinyls. These are actually super helpful, like having nail vinyls or nail stickers. If you're just getting into nail art and you want to have cool nail art, but you're not very confident in your skills of actually doing freehand nail art design, having nail vinyls or nail stickers is really helpful because they can kind of guide you into creating a cool nail art look without much freehand skill. So basically what they are is just stickers with the design etched out of them. You put this over your colored nail polish and then you paint over it, you peel it up, and then the design is left behind. It's just a cool little shortcut. Obviously stamping is another a really great shortcut, but I think that's something that's a little bit more advanced. I wouldn't recommend starting out with stamping. I would recommend using vinyls before you start stamping, but then you can get into the whole world of it. But yeah, those are my recommendations for tools that I think every nail artist should have. Like I said, these are really just the basics. You don't need everything here. It's nice to have DIY versions of what you're using, 
but you know it's also great to invest in some of these products like I said buying a lifetime supply of striping tape is only a few dollars and it'll last you a lifetime of nail art probably but yeah I do think these are all really important tools these are tools that I use almost every time I'm doing nail art and I think they're all really important I hope you guys found this video helpful let me know in the comments below what your favorite nail art tools are if there's a specific tool or brush or dotting tool or something that you really love also definitely let me know in the comments because I love hearing from you guys and I always answer every comment so that's it give this video a thumbs up if you like my nail polish 101 series if you have any requests for another nail polish 101 video also let me know in the comments and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing because I do a lot of nail polish related videos and if you like nail polish you're gonna have a good time all right I'll talk to you guys later bye man fun fact I rarely if ever wear dark lipstick but I love the way it looks oh man I feel like the media has made me feel insecure about my small lips and made me feel like I can't get away with wearing dark lip colors and even when I was putting this lip color on today I was like man I can't really rock this but then I was like you know what I'm gonna rock it anyway because it's fine if you have small lips man I feel like it's it's sad that like everybody feels like they need to get fillers and I actually get some comments sometimes on my YouTube videos of people being like um when are you gonna get uh lip fillers because your lips are a little small or they're like um where's your lip and I'm just like it's small. It's here. I'm not changing them. I'm not getting lip fillers. I don't want them. I like the way my lips look. But yeah, I say all that to say, I like wearing dark lipstick sometimes, and I feel like I'm probably going to wear it a lot more in the winter. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.